I absolutely loathe and dread self-promotion and networking. Is there a way to do this and preserve your soul? I find the manufacture of promotion daunting and distasteful. Alcohol was my go-to for many years in an industry with a drink problem until I gave it up. To me, self-promotion rings false. I'm a person, not a brand. It's like an unsolic unsolicited sales call, somewhere between desperate and cocksure. I don't trust people with complete confidence as in creativity if you don't have a degree of uncertainty. How can you be hungry if you're not bricking it? Um, I actually edited this down. There was a whole big piece around this. Around, But we are in this like balancing act, aren't we? Of like, you've got to put yourself out there, but you don't want to, you know, you don't want to look overconfident and cocky. So how do yeah. we tackle this? I love you and this question, firstly, because I feel like it resonates with so many people. And I think it's this thing where because we're in this creative marketing industry, we're supposed to be good at doing that for ourselves, which actually mm -hmm. most people aren't at all. I think, again, like you said before, any perspective on it from people who have been living on screen for two years, you'll probably see actually the same 20 to 30 people on everything. So actually in our industry, there's about 20 to 30 really good network profile people that seem to be on every trade press panel award. And they have, they often have PR support teams behind them. So it's not, it seems to be this effortless thing that people can just pick up thought leadership or speak on panels or present themselves, but it's actually quite difficult. I think in saying that trade press and events look for new people. So you are desired and wanted. And I think sometimes the hurdle for this stuff is no one wants to hear from me or talk to me. And like you said, if I'm not confident, I love that point because I think that's an interesting point for you anyway, when you say I'm a person, not a brand. I guess the first thing though would be like, why do you want to have a profile and network? Is it something that you want to achieve from a goal? Is it your employer who says you need to have profile to get X? Is there something an outcome that you want that you can then drive towards because that's quite you know that will help you to work out what you actually want out of it the second thing I think is doing exactly as you are don't become a performative wanker and don't do the I'm confident and I you know do keynote speeches and I know everything I'm talking about I think the world is now hungry for that uncertain honest perspective and I think that's really interesting. And if you actually look on LinkedIn and stuff, the comments that get the most likes and shares are people who are being really honest about things and, and sharing learnings and stuff. Not that you have to do that on LinkedIn. The other thing I would say is actually think of networking as like a thing. So I don't like big events. I'm like you, I've hidden in cocktail parties for networking in the bathroom with champagne because I just can't dread going out and dealing just with gotta it. check my phone in the corner yeah i've literally like taken my drink to the toilet <laughs> and there till the, the, the cocktail section was over and in conferences because it's horrible but what you could do and what i sometimes do is just find interesting people and i think this is how andy we got in touch find interesting people who you've heard about who you'd like to talk to and ask if they want to have a coffee and actually the best networking is word of mouth and recommendations and usually that person will then send you on a coffee with someone else and that tends to be the most rewarding otherwise find something you're super passionate about or interested in and yeah. that can be what you talk about so like what Andy's created here you can create something or a point of view that is something that's really true to you and then you won't feel like fraud but you can get noticed for something that makes sense yeah. for you or ask people to promote you because that's also really helpful. So just ask someone else to promote you. <laughs> I love that networking thing. Like the, whenever anyone says networking, it's basically you assume a room full of people and you've got to go and talk to strangers. <laughs> Whereas it doesn't have to be. It, it can be one-on-one yeah. -on -one coffees. Like that's great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Erica, any And I think, well, yeah, jumping in, that's my first thought. So I firstly want to call out like great job on stepping back from the alcohol as a way of getting through it I think that's a, a really good thing on so many levels but yeah like I think a lot of us when we think about networking think you know massive 80s shoulder pads and just you know business cards left right and center and really firm handshakes and that kind of networking is quite so destroying it is you know it's really uncomfortable so I think Nikki my advice is really similar to yours which is like if you aim for this really authentic network what you're doing is building a a range of really interesting people around you with similar ideas and networking isn't always self-promotion often if you amplify other people's work or share a new way of doing things or an article that you know other people are going to really enjoy you add value to them and they want to keep engaged with you so I think you know if it's an area you're 
good at or you're interested in, ask questions, express interest, congratulate people on their work. And yeah, keep it small because you've still got to manage that network as well. There's nothing worse than people feeling it's been very transactional and you've used them for something and then you've moved on. So I think maybe it's a quality over quantity for a really good network. Mm. Yeah, great. That's good. I think we've all just had networking readjusted in our minds now. 